Espio, he's a chameleon. His name means spy in Spanish, and it's the first three letters of the word spoon. And he's one of my favorite Sonic characters. Except back a few years ago, I had no idea I sculpted so many Espio models, and when comparing them, I realized they all look different and certainly display evolutionary qualities. Hey guys, it's L Super Sonic Q, and today we're going to take a look at the evolution of my Espio clay figure. To start things off, here is what I believe to be my very first SPO, which was based off of Sonic Heroes and also went to the Sonic Heroes set, which was the first clay set ever. The first sculpt of the character is often not that great, especially for the time this was made. However, this design is actually fairly accurate despite seeming more reminiscent of his classic design and not Sonic Heroes. This SPO is a fairly large model and was one of the best characters to be sculpted for the Sonic Heroes set, as well as hands down the best sculpt in Team Chaotix. I actually feel like the previous SP was much more accurate sculpt overall, however, chronologically this one comes next and for a certain reason I consider him an evolutionary point. As I've said with many models showcased in this series, I would unintentionally go on a couple year hiatus from sculpting a certain character, and then when I decided to re-sculpt them again, I would consider it a rebirth. So this is the rebirth for SPO, a no reference, I thought he looked exactly like this sculpt which was certainly a defining point of the era. And unknown to me at the time, he would eventually make his way into the Sonic the Fighter set to be sculpted later on that year, which again kind of all exhibited the same inaccurate qualities as this one. Now this is a legit SPO sculpt. He's part of my Super Real Sonic character series and also holds place as my favorite clay model I ever made. This one is very representative of a Sonic the Fighter sculpt, or at least the classic SPO sculpt in general, and I remember there was some confusion as to why this model wasn't included in the original Sonic the Fighter set to begin with. Or at the very least, why the previous model looked so bad since not a lot of time had passed between this one and the previous one. I guess my skills were that much more improved, and I believe I was using some references too. However, I believe that had little influence over other factors. It's a wonder why this SPO wasn't included in the original Knuckles of Chaotix set, or why he didn't dictate how the set should have looked, or why he didn't inspire a set resculpt, but instead he stands as a standalone model. I have no idea why I made this so randomly, other than really liking the Knuckles of Chaotix artwork for SPO and deciding that this model should have had a better sculpt than the original SPO that went to the Knuckles of Chaotix set. The face is very well sculpted, however, as is completely noticeable, he fell over in the oven, so now he's kind of stuck in this weird position. Regardless, I will say that I like the colors I used, despite how they're a little bit darker than they are in the actual artwork. And finally, here's the most recent SPO, sculpted two years ago. If you guys watched the clay tutorial on this guy, at like the second part I was already praising how surprised I was with the accuracy of the face. I was using Sonic Heroes artwork, however by the end I kind of used some creative license and proportioned him a little differently by accident. Probably aside from the super real sculpt, I would say this sculpt, at least in the face alone, is probably the most accurate SPO considering he has all the correct ridges in his face, the horn is where it should be, his eyes are very well placed, and his overall head shape is pretty reflective of how it actually looks in most games. But with that said, that does it for evolutionary SPO clay models. Thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed, and until the next video, Finn.